So, what you see here is Creality Slicer. This is Creality Slicer 1.2.3, the latest version of Creality's in-house slicer, which runs on the Kira engine. It's basically a cloned, reskinned, and slightly updated version of Kira 3.4. Yeah, 3.4. Remember, back when Kira was good? The interface feels almost retro, and all tabby over here on the left, but it's simple, and it's effective. It's not just good, it feels like coming home. All the settings you want are easy to find, with extra settings only a click away, such as quality settings that include layer height, shell thickness, and retraction settings, which can be expanded upon for further setting adjustment. And that's just for quality. It has all of the other obvious settings, such as temperature and speed, and there are some advanced settings here as well, such as retraction, retraction speed, and distance. A couple other settings in the advanced for quality, but if all of this beautiful simplicity is too much for you, all you have to do is switch it over to Quick Print. Now, Quick Print is perfect for places like schools or libraries where you want to get a system set up to allow other people to attempt to print models simply in the easiest way by importing them, selecting a material and a profile, and hitting print. So um, you will have to ensure that you have good quality profiles in here, but this mode kind of makes it easy for anybody to come up to the machine say I want to use this material and I want this quality and hit the print button and be ready to go. All in all the experience here is definitely worth a good look. I'm gonna go back to regular mode and I'm not gonna save the settings. Everything seems to just work and the models I were printing on the stock Ender 3 settings were pretty much amazing. I immediately realized why the test dog came out so nice. It had to be sliced with the Creality Slicer. But why then was generic Kira what was placed on my micro SD when I got the machine right next to the dog file? Who knows? But if you have a Creality machine, I highly suggest ditching Kira and its bugs. And at this point, it's just overextended. They keep adding features before they're ready and not fixing the problems from the last time. I don't know. Maybe they need some sort of skunk works over at Kira to see this and go rogue, secretly going back to a version that worked and building up on that. It would be a nice surprise to get a solid version. And that's what Creality Slicer feels like. A solid, stable version of Kira without all the fluff. Once again, though, I find myself wondering why they don't ship this with every machine. There are so many fans of the Ender 3 alone that support vanilla Kira. If Creality put a little polish on this slicer and pushed it with every printer, Kira would be working for them and Prusa Slicer would be in for a real fight. Instead, they seem content to secret this away and silently make it available for download. While any Creality forum you join pushes Kira, because at this point, it's what people know. I feel like Creality is really missing the boat on this one, and so are you if you're not at least checking this slicer out. Now don't immediately go and delete Kira. The truth is, this slicer's not perfect, but none of them are. I'm just saying I've had really great results with the profiles built into this version of Kira, quote-unquote, uh, and it, it looks nice, it works well, it's simple without being overly complicated, and I mean, it's basically made for your machine if you own a Creality printer. So if you're not checking it out, it's kind of silly. There are a couple other cool things to check out in here, such as the other kinds of modes. There's a transparent mode, which does exactly what it says. This might be useful for making intersecting objects, things of that nature. There's also an X-ray mode. It just kind of turns it blue and does the same thing, and I'm not quite sure what the difference is as to why it has these two modes. There's also an overhang mode, which will show you your red spots that you get pretty much all the time in Kira uh, to see where you're going to need support. We can go back to normal mode, uh, and then the layer mode I was showing you while I was yapping just a minute ago. This is basically after it's sliced. Now it is set to slice automatically, so right off the bat, anytime you change a setting, it's going to reslice your model. And that to me is slightly annoying, kind of a drawback. Kira, there's a way to go in and turn that setting off so it doesn't do that constantly and only slices when you tell it to. But I haven't really dug deep enough into here to find that for this yet. And I don't believe actually that they made the ability to turn that off until a later version of Kira anyway. Um, as I said, this is version 1.2.3, meaning 
they have iterated on it a couple of times since they have taken the, the engine from Kira. So they've done a few tweaks and changes and things like that. Obviously, you can see visually the aesthetic is a lot like the older versions of Kira. Uh, they have customized a few of the icons. This just brings you to the Creelty website. Uh, but they do have the Creelty plate in here. And all of the Creelty printers that I've seen so far were pre-programmed in here with profiles. So uh, if you have a Creelty printer, you should be able to just jump in here, hit the button that says English, obviously, because you don't want directions in Chinese, and then select your printer, and it was pretty much as easy as that. The other thing I noticed, and you're not going to notice right now because I accidentally changed this earlier, but this setting for the stock Ender 3 profile was set at 0.15. Now, if you want to get into a debate about magic numbers, 0.15 is not one of them for this machine. However, I have gotten really nice prints at 0.15, and before I knew about magic numbers, that was the one layer height that I found that consistently gave me good prints. If you don't know what magic numbers are, I have a video about it somewhere around here on the channel, but I highly recommend checking out Chuck Hellebex on Filament Friday on uh, magic numbers because they, they have a lot to do with the print quality. If you look at my video on magic numbers, you'll see I printed two different Lightning McQueens, one at .15 and one at .16. They both came out looking nice, but there were details on the .16 millimeter that we're just missing on the 0.15 millimeter. Dimensional accuracy was there, everything was pretty close, but there were small subtle details um, such as raised ridges on Lightning's hood and uh, eyebrows and things like that. Things I didn't notice were missing until I had the 0.16 model to compare it to. So uh, definitely look into magic numbers, but you won't have any problems printing at that 0.15 millimeter height. Uh, you just may not get the exact type of resolution quality you're looking for as you would if printing at a magic number. So uh, other than those two little caveats, I have had a lot of fun playing around with this. I'm going to print a bunch more models. We'll come back and revisit this later and check out some of the things that I printed. But for now, I just kind of wanted to make everybody aware that this was out there. And I'll put the link in the description down below. Go check it out. Give them a shot. I mean, it's a lot, a lot I, w I would say it's dumbed down from here and now, but it just seems like it's decluttered and still has all the functional parts that you want. So it's definitely worth your time, and that's going to be it for this video. Thanks, guys. As always, this channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. As always, thank you. I'll put a video up right here that you can check out for more of our stuff. And if you're still here and you haven't already, why don't you click right here and subscribe to the channel.